Hello, I'm Marie from the Little Angel Theatre and I'm going to be reading one of the Greek myths for you. Um, this one is about Aphrodite, the goddess of love, and it's called... Um, just put my glasses on. <laughs> it's called The Charming Greek Myth of Eros and Psyche. Here we go. Once upon a time, a long time ago, there lived three princesses. Psyche, the youngest, was very kind. She was also very beautiful. She was so beautiful, in fact, that the powerful goddess of love, Aphrodite, became very jealous of Psyche. In fear of what the great goddess might do if they paid any attention to Psyche, all the young men in the kingdom avoided her, and none of them wanted to marry her. Her two sisters finally married, but Psyche, she stayed at home with her father. Now, Psyche could not remain at home forever. In those days, girls had to marry someone. So her father consulted Apollo's oracle at Delphi. Well, you know oracles. Who knows what the oracle actually said? But what the king heard was that his beloved daughter should prepare to die. Sadly, the king took Psyche to the edge of the cliff and he left her there. In despair, Psyche might have leapt to her death, but before she could, she felt herself lifted into the air. Zephyrus, the gentle west wind, had taken pity on the girl and gently carried her away to a faraway palace, to the home of his good friend, Eros, the lonely god of love. Eris was a handsome young man, but he had a pair of very big wings. He did not wish to scare Psyche, so he made himself invisible, and he warned Psyche that if she valued his love, she must not try to catch a glimpse of him. Psyche was treated with great gentleness, good company and much laughter and she soon fell in love with her invisible host. For some time, they were blissfully happy. But Psyche longed to see her family. Eros finally agreed to allow her to invite her two sisters to the palace. Filled with envy at the sight of the palace and the riches it contained, her two sisters maliciously convinced Psyche that she was being fooled that her husband was a fearsome monster and that she had to escape. But he's so kind and gentle, said Psyche. He cannot be a monster, I would know. He's fooling you, Psyche, you need to trust us. Her sisters returned home, dissatisfied with their own lives and jealous of Psyche's. Well, Psyche, she just cried and oh, she cried. But one night, she took a lamp in one hand and a dagger in the other, and she crept into her host's bedroom. Instead of the monster she expected to find, she saw Eros, a handsome young man with two white wings. She was not frightened at all. A drop of oil from the lamp fell on the sleeping god. He woke instantly. He saw his Psyche leaning over him with a dagger in her hand. With great sorrow, he spread his wings and he flew away. Psyche crumbled to the floor. How foolish she had been to listen to her sisters. She ran outside to the river. She threw herself into the water and she expected to drown. But Pan, the god of the shepherds, pulled her safely from the water. Aphrodite is the goddess of love. Ask her for her help. That's what Pan advised her. Psyche prayed to Aphrodite for help. Aphrodite was still jealous. So she pretended to help her. I mean, she was, after all, the goddess of love. 
So she gave Psyche tasks to prove her love for Eros that no mortal could possibly accomplish. Yet Psyche accomplished task after task. Although she did not know it, Psyche was helped by invisible beings, sent to her by Eros, who loved her still. At last, Aphrodite told Psyche her final task. She was to retrieve a box from the underworld, a very special box with magical beauty supplies inside. With these, she could make herself so beautiful that Eros would fall hopelessly in love with her. Now, you might think that Psyche was quite excited that this was her last task. But Psyche knew that she had to die in order to enter the Land of Shades. It was hopeless. Suddenly, she heard a voice speaking softly in her ear. It warned her of the dangers ahead and what she had to do to retrieve the box safely without dying. The voice was very clear. Here's what she had to do. 1. Have a coin ready for the toll in the underworld. 2. Bring three pieces of sweet bread to give to Cerebus, the three-headed dog. 3. Do not eat anything, not even a seed. 4. Once you find it, bring the box to Aphrodite without opening it. Psyche did everything she was told. She arrived back in the land of light safely. Waiting for Aphrodite to show up, she grew nervous. What if it was the wrong box? Psyche opened the box just a crack to peek inside. A foul-smelling cloud poured out. Psyche dropped to the ground as if she was dead. To save her life, Eros returned to his visible form and prodded her with a point of a golden arrow. She awoke immediately. Psyche, what am I going to do with you? Will you never learn? said Eros. I have learned, said Psyche softly. I've learned that I love you. Eros gathered her into his arms and flew them back to his palace. It took a while, but Eros finally convinced his mother, Aphrodite, to accept Psyche as his wife. With Aphrodite's help, he convinced the great Zeus to admit Psyche to the ranks of the immortal gods. In celebration, Psyche and Eros threw a party in their palace. Apollo played his lyre. Dionysus brought the wine, and all the gods rejoiced. And as for Eros and Psyche, well, they lived happily ever after.